Hello, beautiful people, and welcome. In this video, we are talking about the law of cosines. In the previous video, we did talk about law of sines. Uh, this video, everything about law of cosines. Now, for the law of cosines, you're going to use this when you have two things, when you have side, angle, side, or when you have all three sides. Those are the two times that you're going to be using law of cosines. Now, what is the law of cosines? Law of cosine, I mean, there's three different ways that you can write this. Uh, technically, it's the same exact thing. It just depends on how you label your triangle. But ultimately, what it's saying is if you take a side, let's do the first one. You take a side, square it, that's going to equal to the other two sides added together, each one squared, but you're going to subtract two times these two sides, and then you're going to take multiply by the cosine of your angle measure. And that's going to be exactly the same. So I'm going to repeat that. Take a side, square it. That's going to be equal to the other two sides squared, added together, minus two times these two sides times the cosine of this angle. Now these two other two are exactly the same, but it's just through the point of view of a different side. So if you have side B, you're going to square it. You're going to then make it equal to A squared, B squared, just kidding, A squared, C squared, add that together, minus A and C times two, times the cosine of that angle. So let's let's see how this works in practice. Okay. What do you have? You have a side, an angle, a side. When you have side, angle, side, you're going to use cosine, law of cosine. And so what is law of cosine? Like this one's not labeled A, B, C, whatever. It's just giving you numbers and a variable of X to find a side. So this is your unknown. So what you want is start out with the side that you don't know. So in this case, there's X. Now, sometimes the X that you want could potentially not be the, the unknown, right? You can't use it, but in this case, watch what's gonna happen. You have a side, across the street you have an angle. So that means you're gonna say X squared is equal to, you have two other side lengths. You have 23, and you have nine. You're going to take both of them. You're going to add them. You're going to square each. That is now going to be subtracted from two times each one. Then you're going to multiply by cosine of that opposite angle, which is 71. Take your side, square it. That is equal to the other two sides squared and added. Then you're going to subtract two times these side measures. Again, the one that you're not using. And that's going to be multiplied by cosine of the angle across the street from the side that you need. And you solve. 23. Ooh, my calculator's up. 23 squared. That is 529. Why am I using pencil? I don't know. 529 plus 9 squared, 81. You can do that all in one, you know, add that. So I have 2 times 23 times 9. So I have 414, uh, what is that? 414 times cosine of 71. I'm going to leave cosine of 71. Now, be very careful. Treat this like a bubble. Treat that like a bubble. Because these two are attached by multiplication. You cannot subtract these two numbers. They're like different bubbles, different colors. 610 minus 414 times cosine of 71. Completely different. Don't subtract these two. Treat them as two different things. But you can do 414 times cosine of 71, which gives me uh, 134.785. 
And again, all of this is equal to x squared. So then I'm going to subtract. which gives me 475.215-ish. I'm going to take the square root. So x is equal to about, again, approximating here. And that's going to be equal to about 21.799, or you can round that to 8. Now, again, what are we trying to find? We're trying to find measurement. So we're not going to take the negative form of that. We're just using the positive, and I'm going to round to 21.8. You can do units here since we don't know what the side measures are. Let's do another one. In question number two, it's not giving us a picture, so we're going to have to just randomly draw one. Here's triangle ABC. Angle B, let's make it here, AC. Uh, angle B is 106 degrees, AB is 10, BC is 7, find AC, so we have this as our unknown. What do we have? We have a side, we have an angle and a side, so therefore we use law of cosine. Here is your side that's unknown, across the street from it is the given angle, which we have what we need. So we have x squared is equal to, take the other two sides, whatever they are, on each side of your angle, of each side of your angle, and say 7 squared plus 10 squared. We're going to subtract 2 times the 7 times the 10 times cosine of that angle, in this case 106. Make sure that you understand that all of this is multiplication, so it's being grouped together. 7 squared plus 10 squared, that's going to be 149. We're going to subtract all of that, and I'm just going to type all of that into my calculator. 2 times 7 times 10 times cosine of 106. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. And that's actually giving me a negative, so it gives me a negative uh, 38.589229844-ish. So I'm going to say 149 minus a negative 38.589229844. 144-ish, and that's going to give me x squared is 187.589229-ish. So we're going to take the square root of that. And that gives me an approximate angle, excuse me, approximate side of 13.69, or you can do 13 because the next one is 6. So you can do x is approximately 13.7. And again, units, it's not giving us the units. All right, let's go ahead and do this. This time we're trying to find angle here. So we're not trying to find the side, we're trying to find the angle. Given to us is side, side, side. So we're using law of cosine. So when you're given an unknown angle, that's fine. Just understand that the unknown angle and the across the street side have a relationship. So the across the street side is eight, so that's where you're gonna have eight squared is equal to the other two angles, excuse me, the other two sides from this angle, right, next to it. Those are gonna be the ones that you're gonna be squaring and adding. You're gonna be subtracting two times those sides times the cosine of the angle. But the cosine of the angle is x, so we don't know what this value is. That's what we're trying to find, but that's okay. Let's figure it out. So, obviously, 8 times 8 is 64. 11 squared plus 10 squared, that is 221 minus, and I'm going to multiply as much as I can. Obviously, cosine of x, I don't know, but 2 times 11 times 10, that is 220 times cosine of x. Here is kind of how what we're dealing with. Obviously, we have this cosine of x that is in its own, but it's being multiplied by that 220. This 220 still has a bubble in front of it, which is this minus. So you're dealing with two things, technically three. This minus is saying all of this has is a negative or has a negative attached to it. So in order to get all of this by itself, you're going to subtract this value of negative 200, 
uh, 21. So 64 minus 221, that gives us a negative 157. So now what are we left with? We're left with negative 220 times cosine of x. Remember that cosine of x is kind of on its own, but it is attached to multiplication. So now I'm going to add. Just kidding, I'm not going to add. You guys to see that? I almost made a big mistake. Okay, I'm not adding. Why am I not adding? Because this is attached by multiplication. So how do I undo this multiplication? Well, I'm going to take my negative 220 times cosine of x, and I'm going to divide by negative 220 on both sides. So I'm going to have cosine of x is equal to negative 157 divided by negative 220. And that gives me 0.713636-ish. Again, what is our objective? Find the angle. Whenever we're trying to find an angle like this, we're going to use the inverse. So we're going to use inverse of cosine to isolate our x or our angle measure. So second cosine, which I have 0 0.1, just kidding, 0 0.713636. And that's going to be 44.5-ish degrees because we're dealing with an angle measure for our angle x. Okay, let's do one last one. We'll wrap up law of cosine. This one didn't give us a picture, so let's draw it out. We have a triangle L, M, N. L, M is 25. M, N is 20. L, N is 24. Find the angle of L. So this is, let's call it theta. So what is given to us? We have a side, a side, a side. So we're going to be using law of cosine. We want this angle, so we're going to go across the street for the side that we need. So we're going to use 20 as 20 squared. And then the other two is what we're going to be squaring and adding. So I have 25 squared plus 24 squared. That's going to be subtracted by 2 times 25 times 24 times cosine of our angle theta that we don't know. Simplify this as much as you can. So I have 1,201 minus 1,200. Really, is that right? Let's double check. Yeah, that's right. It looks like right. I thought the squared values were, were going to give me a much bigger value, but I guess not. Again, this is all times cosine of theta, and this is all equal to 20 squared, which is 400. Again, I want this by itself, so I'm going to subtract 1201. So I have 400 minus 1201, and that gives me negative 801. And that's going to be equal to negative 1,200 times cosine. This is multiplication. So we're going to divide. And that's going to give me cosine of theta equal to 0 0.6675. We're trying to find the angle. Whenever you're trying to find the angle, use the inverse. So I have the inverse of cosine. 0 0.6675 is equal to theta. Using my calculator, I have my answer to be theta is about 48.13 degrees. All right, beautiful people, that wraps up our law of cosine. We will be doing lots and lots more examples.